In this video, we are going to talk about how to read a properties file using Jenkins. Whether you're a Java programmer or not, you're probably familiar with the concept of a properties file. And if you're not familiar, a properties file is simply a file that contains key value pairs. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the read properties step from the pipeline utility steps plugin to read a properties file from within a Jenkins pipeline. Here's our starting point for today. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.303.1, and you'll notice I don't have any agents attached. And that's because I'm using Kubernetes to provide ephemeral agents. If you haven't watched the video about how to use Kubernetes pods as Jenkins agents, you'll need to do that in order to understand how to set up Kubernetes to provide agents to your controller. Also, we are using a sample repository today. The link to that repository is down in the description of this video. As I said in the introduction, we're going to be using the read property step from the pipeline utility steps plugin. At this point, I have actually already installed the plugin, but let's go take a look at it just so you're aware of what it looks like. So installed pipeline utility steps. And at the time of recording, it's 2.10.0. And let's go take a look at the documentation for read properties. Read properties has up to four fields. All four of these are actually optional, but if you're going to get any kind of value out of it, you need to provide at least something. So there's four values. There's a file, so it will read a file from the file system. Text, you can just pass in text values. We also have the option for defaults, which we'll see in our example in a few moments and we're not going to talk about interpolate in this video. Now, if you think about it, I could have done a really simple example for read properties. But I want to show you something a little more interesting. We're using a repository that was used in another video that was named using TFSEC and Jenkins to secure your Terraform code. If you haven't watched that video yet, not a big deal, but you can go watch it at your convenience so you can understand a little bit more of the basis of what we're building on in this video. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be using read properties to set values for our build tools. So what do I mean by build tools? Let me pull up my Jenkins file from that repository. Now, in this repository, the branch we're working in today is the properties-file branch. You can see that down here in the bottom left-hand corner. So I have a Jenkins file, and you'll notice that it looks pretty normal from line 16 down. Standard declarative pipeline. We'll go through all this in just a moment. But let's take a look at lines 1 through 14. I'm defining a map here. I have Terraform version colon 100, a tfsec version of v057.1, and a tflint version of v032.0. These are the versions of the tools that I want to be able to use by default, thus D. Nothing magical about the letter D but we're using it down here in read properties at line 12. You'll also notice that I've set up an empty map with props. And if we take a closer look at what's happening here, because we're doing everything inside of Kubernetes, I need to grab the values from a file that we will be naming, it doesn't exist yet, version.properties, and then we're going to be loading those into the props map variable. But since we have a default here, if we provide a version.properties, anything that's defined in version.properties will override whatever the defaults are, and our defaults are defined up here. Now, because we're using everything with Kubernetes, we have no executor on the controller itself, I basically need to spin up a quick ephemeral agent to be able to read the version.properties file from my repository. That's why we're doing a checkout here first. So we're checking out the files into our current ephemeral agent that we've got. And then we load those values up into props. Now that I've defined props here, then once we get down into the real pipeline where we're going to be doing the real work, then you can see here that we're doing a token replacement right here. And you can also see the ones just below 
here at line 32 and at line 37. So we're saying from props with the terraform.version key, I'm going to load in whatever the value of that is. If I don't have a version.properties, the value is going to be 1.0.0. If I'm doing the tfsec one, if it's not defined in version.properties, it's going to be v057.1. Now, why is the number of v here and not a v here? It's just the way that the releases were tagged. And then once we get into our job, we're doing a handful of different Terraform steps. I'm just doing a Terraform version here just to verify that the version of Terraform that I defined is what I expect it to be. I do an init. I'm doing a Terraform validate. Then I'm doing tflint just to check out, OK, is my Terraform file OK? And then I'm doing a tfsec. Again, you can watch the previous tfsec video to understand what that's about. Then we do a Terraform plan. And then I'm outputting the plan to TF plan, And then I'm reusing that TF plan from the plan output to feed into my Terraform apply. Now, you might be thinking, OK, well, what's this Terraform file all about? What are we doing with Terraform here? In this case, it's nothing more than just sending an output to the screen. This is a very simple and contrived Terraform file, but it's valid. So let's see what we get here. We'll go back here to Jenkins file. Let's go ahead and set up a job to run this Jenkins file. Also, I want you to notice one more thing. We talked about reading in version properties at line 12. Notice over here, there is no version properties. So we would expect that all of these values that populate down here should be the default values. So let's go back over to our controller. And let's create a new job. Let's call this TF pipeline. OK. Let's go grab the repository. So what I need to do here is Jenkins example Terraform. Copy that. Let's go to our job. Change this to git. There's our URL. The branch that we're working in is properties-file. Let's go ahead and match this up over here. Properties-file, so we can see what's going on. And we're working with Jenkins file. OK, let's go ahead and click on Save. And then we're going to go ahead and click on Build Now. This job run is going to take a little bit longer because my Jenkins controller is located locally on my machine. And my Kubernetes cluster is halfway across the country in the United States. So making these calls are going to take a little bit longer. So I'm going to click on Build Now. Then we'll fast forward through it. And then we'll take a look at the build output. OK, now that the job is finished, let's go ahead and scroll back up top. We'll work our way back down through the job log. So this is our ephemeral agent that got spun up to read in the repository just to try to find the version.properties file. So there's the definition of the pod, and it's just a single container pod in this case. It does the checkout from Git. And then it gives us a warning saying version.properties does not exist, omitting from properties gathering. Completely fine, because if you remember, there is no version properties within the repository at this point. Completely OK, completely to be expected. Now we start to create our next pod. But notice here, we have Terraform 100. We have TFSec CI v057.1. And we have tflint v0320. These are the values of our defaults that were up here. So these filled in down here when this pod was being created. So then the job runs. And we can see here, just to make sure that everything is working as we expect, here's our output for Terraform 100. 
If we take a look at TF Lint, there's our three, our 0, 0.32.0, 0, and then TF Sec was 0, 0.57.1. Again, those are all the default values that we have here. Now what I want to do is go ahead and create that version.properties file. So let's create a new file. I'm going to call it version.properties. Make sure I spell it right. And I am going to load in current versions at the time of recording of each of these tools. So the versions that we had here in our Jenkins file are older versions. They're still within versions that I want. Maybe they were the old versions I was using in my examples, but now I'm moving on, but I'm not ready to actually change my defaults yet, but I'm willing to just override them and make sure everything still works. Once I know that everything still works, I may go in and change the defaults. That way I don't have to be concerned with setting up a versions.properties file. So let's go ahead and add this file. So add versions, and let's push that up to Git. And if we take a look at our repository here, I'm gonna refresh it. Now we have our version.properties 16 seconds ago, and there are the versions that we're looking for. Let's go back over to our job. No changes to the job. All we're doing is going to go in and click on Build Now. Again, just like last time, this is going to take a few minutes. So I'll join you again once it's finished running through. And now that this one finished, let's go ahead and take a look back up top and work our way down again. So we're at the very top. Here's that quick ephemeral agent that we're using to read version.properties. So we go past the pod definition. And you'll notice this time, read properties here, but it doesn't give us a warning about no version properties found. So it found version.properties. How do I know that? Let's take a look at this pod. I can see Terraform 107. I can see TFSec 5811. And I can see TFLint 32.1. These versions are the versions that we defined in our version.properties file. And just to prove everything is still the same, if we get down into the actual job run here, what we will see is we will see Terraform 107, we will see TFLint 0321, and we'll see TFSec 5811. What we've seen in this video is that through the use of properties files, we are able to configure things such as the versions of our build tools without needing to go into our Jenkins file to make those changes. That might not seem like a big deal to you, but it does help us mitigate risk. Why do I say that? Think about this. You have someone new that started on your team and they went in to make a change to the Jenkins file and they added in some extra characters or maybe they did some formatting or did something just because they thought they should do it. In that case, that Jenkins file may be broken and could cause downtime for your CI processes. By exposing just the configurations that we want changed within this job, the only real risk that we have is the person messes up, puts in a wrong version, yes, it blows up, but I'm not having to go and search down in my Jenkins file of, okay, what broke? It's just, oh, let's go take a look at the properties file. Oh, we have an extra character here. Instead of being 107, it was 170D. I was like, oh, no, don't need D, get rid of D. Everything's fine, we're moving back again. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter, at CloudBeesDevs. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.